Greetings YouTube and welcome to the blue corner and to a Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile and it is going to be on, well, the deck that everyone loves to hate, Necros, because I finally got around to updating my deck for the current format, or rather what's left of this format. I have a feeling they're going to get hit on the ban list in some manner, so I figured I'd have at least an opportunity to play this past weekend at my locals with a deck at its current strength before Unicorn probably gets hit, which I think will probably be be the correct way to go about uh, handling this, this deck. I don't know if they'll also take the route of the OCG and hit Brionac and Cycle, but they might, but yeah, it's Performage Necroz. You've already seen my Performage doll, so I figure also I will show you guys Performage Necroz, and then after that I can just start working on some of my other deck projects, but yeah, since this is Necroz, we all know what this deck does at this point, I don't think I need to go into too much detail, it's just a deck update, but yeah, let's begin. So, for the monsters, I'm running... Three copies of Alcaris, kind of really important. Three copies of arguably the best card in the deck, Unicor, if not the most Flood Yeti. I literally won games because I can just summon Unicor and make a stick. Two Brionac, two Colossalus, and one Trishilla. I'm not running Loganeer or Decisive Armor as they are not combo cards, thus they contribute to Breaking War which is what this deck really wants to avoid game one. I am side decking Decisive Armor because it's good in the mirror match and it's also great against the BA and Dolls, but game one, I don't particularly care so much for them. And then for the non Necros Ritual Monsters, one Dance Princess, one Great Sorcerer, and one Shirt. So I'm running Dance Princess over Exa as well, Exit is good. I like Dance Princess just being able to get back anything that's been banished once already. Like, in the case of the Mirror Match, I get Trished. I can just use Dance Princess in conjunction with Cycle and or Valkyris in order to get that Trishula back. And I can Trish them and hopefully I'll have the game set there. It also makes it so that cards like Maxi and like trap cards, like it means that it makes it hard for your opponent to like respond to your stuff because a lot of people will try and like hold their things for when you try and start ritual summoning. Or I had people bring in Maxi and retaliating C on me. I would just summon Dance Princess, then go for a Trish play. You can't weather my Trish and you can't respond to my ritual summon. And I won games because of that. And then like the other two are pretty self explanatory. Sure, it's a full tribute. Create Sorcerer is able to search out Valkyrie's Unicorn, and when you banish him from the graveyard, you can set up your cycle if need be. And then for the ritual support, three Manju, three Senju, and then for the four mage engine, I'm running two Hat Tricker and two Damage Juggler. I would like to run three and three of each, but I had to cut one out of each one in order to make room for just some main deck tech for at least my locals, but honestly, I would, I'm going to cut those out and go either uh -oh, three of this, two of this, and one Trick Clown, but I'm not sure if I actually like Trick Clown here. If anything, I'm just going to go 3-3. Three, three. Like, I think Trick Clown is a bit on the underwhelming side, but I'll give it another chance and get back to you guys on that. And for Hand Traps, Valor, and Maxi. I really do feel that most decks should be main decking these two in conjunction that now that Norton is a thing. Because if you max C a Norton an instant fusion, and they go for the Norton, you're gonna get a plus two, and, oh, and you may very well draw into the Valor to negate the Norton. And Valor is just good in general. Like I feel like hand, hand traps are better now that the Nor multiple Nortons are a thing. Maybe post ban list if instant fusion goes to one, not as powerful, but I think that they're these are just good generally across the board. And then for the spells. Two copies of Lance, this is why I cut out one of my before mages war because my locals right now is like the only things I really lose to are just infinite back row. So I wanted to just have a thing that would just stop. It's like, yeah, I could also main deck MST in order to kill the vanity's emptiness, the lose one turns, and the mistakes. But I like the idea of instead just going for like an Exiton play with Forbidden Lance. That way they have no means of stopping it. I blow away their board. This is just mostly Cleavor hit here, as that's the only deck that I have problems with when playing this. That and Shadows are also a bit of a challenge, but um, I think my main, like these cards already help me with doll dolls because uh, Star Seraph Shadows, these are really strong against. Instant Fusion, Norton Dolls, these are also really good against. So, 
I decided to just go with the lances in order to deal with the back row that would just make it difficult, like Breakthrough Skill, Phoenix Chain, Mirror Force, etc, etc. But they, de they definitely got sided out a lot of games for more back row hates. Two Instant Fusion, I believe two is the magic number for this deck. I'm only running one Norden, but you can always just recycle the Norden with, uh, what's his name, Devast on Meryl, two Rhoda, and then just the six Mirrors plus Preparation of Rights. I'd say it's pretty standard at this point. The only difference is I decided to make that part of Midland Lance, but that was just purely a local metal call. If I were to go to another regionals, I'd probably run MST or break you skill in there. But the next regionals I potentially go to will be in December, which is when Dimension of Chaos comes out, and God knows what the format's gonna be like at that point. Then for the extra deck, it's pretty straightforward. I'm running two Heralds plus a Red Nova Dragon for my Kaleido targets. My one no, uh, Norden, never needed to actually use it more than once. To Amiro, Dweller, Castell, Diamond Dire, Exiton, Cowboy, Rhapsody, Masquerade, since I can actually make it. And I literally won games in the mirror match because my opponent didn't have the Veiler, and he also actually did Noble Masquerade, which is kind of important as it says, oh, you have a Valkyrie in hand? It doesn't matter. I can negate your Valkyries and two damage jugglers while also burning you, so it's a lot of, it allows you to make game pushes. And then just the Tall Mouse and Diamond Engine because we have a lot of dolls here. And that's really all I've got for the deck itself. I mean, I could show you the side I made for this thing, but... It's like purely my locals. Like I had a maxi for the mirror match. This is good for the mirror match and dolls and B8 to some extent. This is just good against a lot of things in general. This is just purely a medical. It's good against Cleef Fort and I we usually have about three or four Cleef Fort players at our locals. So I figured this, these were justified. Regeki and Dark Hole sort of were space fielders. I thought I'd be bringing them on the mirror and tattles, but I found like the other cards I was citing were more important. So these are probably going to go, and they could be something else, maybe like mind crushes, or I move some stuff out from the main deck. I, I don't know, but I know I didn't particularly care for these cards in here. And then, triple MST and double and three. So, yeah, as you can tell, lots of hate towards preventing back row from locking me out of the game. Oh, and yeah, I know. My our BA player was not present today, so these would actually be flying seas. And improvement. I think I'd also be citing a retaliating sea. And I think it would be the pretty decent here. I could probably drop Archfiend Eccentric for the retaliating seas. But yeah, that's that's really it for the deck itself. Like it's Necros. I know some people are gonna be like, oh god, look at this ne Necros, so unskilled to use that, but so I say is uh, haters gonna hate. I like me my blue cards, you guys know this, and I will be very sad to see that this thing eventually hits it in some manner. I just hope they don't hit Monju and Zenju, but at this point it's like, I don't particularly care. The next ritual archetype that they make is probably gonna be able to play without the need for Monju and Zenju, so it's whatever. I am looking forward to see what they will do though now that Necroz has raised the bar with ritual summoning to the way it has. Like, let's be, let's be real here. Thanks to Necroz, the Ritual Summon mechanic has been updated to the point where it's now better than Synchro Summoning. Like, a Ritual deck, like Necroz as a Ritual archetype, is just now better than most Synchro-based archetypes. Which is actually kind of insane and really cool. So, I'm curious how they will raise the bar, because Necroz have influenced at least some other Ritual spells now in that... Red Eyes Transmigration banishes from the graveyard, much like Necroz Mirror. Advent of Odd Eyes allows you to s revive a dragon from your graveyard, a la Necroz Cycle, and it has the Necroz Kaleidoscope Clause, so who knows what the next one will be. I'm curious to see. I'm hoping that we'll get like an advanced ritual arc clone, or better yet, something that says you can ritual summon a ritual monster from your main deck if your opponent controls X or more extra deck monsters. That's what I would do, is like, tribute a monster from your hand, ritual summon the appropriate level something from your deck, but that's all I got for this video, hope you guys enjoyed it, and as far as what you can expect next on here, I have been building Gang Zing, so hopefully I'll give that deck a shot, and I'm literally one black stone away from having a red eyes deck done, so 
I can eventually do that for my big 1400 subscriber special is red eyes or just dragon talk in general. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, this is Blue Starting 9. Check me out.